I'm here in the, the studio with Tony Horn and uh, we're going to talk about news. So tell me why I'm important on the uh, on the news in the morning. Uh, you're not really, but uh, the news is... Uh, <laughs> I, I love news. I'm a news junkie. I remember a story that Adrian John, who was on Radio 1 many years ago, told me. And that was he used to go into meetings at Radio 1 and all the DJs would be sitting around reading The Sun and Paul Gambaccini would be reading The Guardian. <laughs> and I, I've never forgotten that. But I've just always been you know, what people call an information hoover, I suppose, or just shoveling up information. Some of it goes out on the air straight away, and others uh, it sits there and, you know, reappears days later. But I think if you're going to be broadcasting and you're not just playing the hits, I think it's clear that your number one source of content has got to be the news. And it's not... What is news? It's life isn't it that's what it is so news is important because it's life and that's what we talk about and you're better off if you're doing a speech-based morning show um, being inspired by stations like five live and sky news really because information is just being churned there all the time and one of the great things for us is that we can do the light and shade of a news story i call our show you know in vague terms, five live hits and humour. So we can do all the stuff like cuts in the northeast, and we'll always find a lighter side of the dark side as well. And you know, Moti, <laughs> serious, serious story, biggest news story in the northeast in years, and yet there was humour to be had in that. And thankfully, we've got a format that allows that, encourages that. Um, and news is a word invented by media people, isn't it? But at the end of the day, it's all conversation about life and stuff that is new on the morning that we wake up. And when we talk about things on the news in the morning, it, it makes that difference sometimes because you'll pick up on something which, which I've read out on the news and that will lead us on to, you know, say a whole new investigation. It's amazing how you can literally open a can of worms and how one person might have something on a script that another person wouldn't necessarily see as exceptional. Um, it's just what floats your boat, and that happens to us all the time. That you know, you'll run something, Joel, at six o'clock in the morning, and I'll go, "Well, hang on a minute." You know, uh, that was just like a third story. But if we dig a bit deeper, there's probably a hell of a lot more in that. And it's great pleasure when you still hear it being run at six o'clock in the afternoon, or when you turn on Tyne Tees and look north, and you know that that story started on our show and I'm just trying to think of an example now <laughs> but I know that there was one a couple of weeks ago that you told me that the BBC had lifted and I can't remember what it was but it's about also there setting an agenda having a different mind seeing what is stand out and then having the confidence and the ability to find angles on it, I think. Uh, just to remind you, that was the story about the bar crawls, which uh, which got cancelled because they were promoting binge drinking. That was the story about the bar crawls that got promoted because they were promoting binge drinking, which Joel um, picked up basically from just being in society. It was a leaflet, wasn't it, that you and your mates found? And I guess the other thing is news, in many ways, is becoming more important because you'll get told things and we'll get told things on Twitter and on Facebook from from the listeners, which which is actually news, and, and they're bringing it to us now. News as we know it is finished. It's over. It's dead. It's history. OK? I mean, news breaks in cyberspace. DJs that are reading stuff out of newspapers in the morning, you're history. You are finished. You can need, The Chilean miners proves this. You pick up the Daily Mail in the morning and it says... You know, 16 miners arrest you. You go on online anywhere, and the figures updated within seconds. You know about trending topics on Twitter, and nobody should be snobby about finding news sources in cyberspace. Michael Jackson dying, you know, a couple of years ago, broke in cyberspace. Look at all the banter that follows on the text afterwards. It's it's like a Chinese whisper. It's a pack of cards, and off it goes. And I think people that are looking to traditional sources. You know, like police voicemails, where you often don't get a lot of information. I think they're in the wrong game. I think you've got to be playing with the punters in cyberspace. You have a responsibility, a professional responsibility, to be on the Twitter and on the Facebook and to take very seriously information that is coming in that way. But, of course, you've got to use your journalistic skill to know where the line is that these people 
don't have the legal training and are prone to exaggeration <laughs> sometimes. But yeah, it's the most important place to start now in 2010, heading into 2011. And finally, I think local news as well is that's a real, real buzzword because you don't get that everywhere listening to, to every radio station now. Local news is important if you are on a local radio station, but it's only important if it's good. You know, it, what I mean by that, you take the Chilean miners story again, and there's no need to get somebody from the National Union of Miners or Mine Workers or whatever the NUM stands for. It's an irrelevance, frankly. We've not had a 70 day down a mine scenario in the Northeast. We haven't really had pits, you know, since around about the, the, the mid 80s as a serious industry. Uh, so, local, to be local in that sense, in my opinion, is parochial rubbish. But local, uh, you know, when you're talking about the obvious, the moat, etc., or the Newcastle United, or it's going to be called sportsdirect.com, St James's Park, Boulevard, Stadium, nonsense, all that kind of stuff. The Great North Run, you know, you have a responsibility as a broadcaster to own those things and to tap into the emotions, you know, and information behind those stories. And, you know, local doesn't have to be NAF. You know, the launch of, uh, the, launch of uh, the LEAF, you know, very exciting story that dominated the radio station for a day. Uh, but then, interestingly, afterwards come the questions. You know, how many electric car charging points are there? What was the cost of that that didn't get announced on the press date? 23 grand? Ooh. You know, and that's an ongoing story in your community, and that's a great story. It's a proper story. It's not rubbish. It's not l local parochial. It's local good, and you're going to just in this community where an industry like Nissan can dominate, uh, you're pressing the right buttons and and you know relating to your audience there in a way that a national broadcaster or a regional broadcaster can't really. Great. I'm going to go show this to the bosses now so they don't fire me. Thanks very much. Nothing to do with me. <laughs>